Well, I wanted to be able to do a uh, campfire soon. These nights, it's hard to stop working before uh, sundown. So I just run out of daylight and then I got a ton of stuff to do inside. Um, yeah, tough to stop working outside till the sundown. Then I do all my inside stuff usually after that. But I had all this dry wood sitting around here, a couple different things I wanted to do with it. One, as I was thinking, I'm just making some nice benches. So I cut this log in half, give it a flat side here, and then with the beveled side on the bottom, kind of the natural round of it, I thought I'd take a couple of these pieces, cut them flat on the bottom so they didn't roll, and kind of make a similar notch out of it there so I could take it, throw it down, and put that in there and have it hold it in place. So I'm gonna go set one of these up by the campfire right now and see if this won't work for some of the children. Just making kind of some simple rustic camp decor, just chainsaw stuff, but uh, never really done anything like it. Never cut a log lengthwise. Um, kept it pretty straight overall. For sitting, it doesn't matter as much as if you're trying to make lumber this way. You normally make some sort of a, uh, a spacer, some sort of a thing that helps you stay level. But um, yeah, Monster Truck's coming over to pick up some more firewood. Maybe I'll have him grab a couple of these to take over to the fire pit so I ain't gotta carry them. I told him earlier to start carrying some of this stuff over. First thing he does is grab the gorilla cart and uh, filled that up and I'm like, son, you are so smart. I probably would have walked back and forth all day grabbing, you know, two or three at a time. And uh, he gets more in one load than, you know, I expected him to actually get done total. I was just hoping he'd take some over, but he's got a couple loads going. should be the first one to try it out. Wow, we already got three children on and there's room for more. What do you think? Could you watch a campfire from there, kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, yeah. that'll work. And we got some wood ready and some brush and stuff. So my baby rabbits, they've gotten pretty big. <laughs> I think they're five weeks old maybe now. I don't know, I can't really remember. Um, but they're pretty big. I really like this one because it's like gray and gray, uh, kind of red and everything. And underneath it has two brown spots there. So it's just really cool. And then they're getting really big and they're driving their mom crazy all the time because she doesn't really like them when they get on it. So normally she just jumps in the nesting box and then they all follow her. So now they've started to um, eat and to 
drink water, so they're growing really fast, and they're still kind of small. When you sex them, it doesn't. Sometimes it's not right, so we have to wait. I have to wait for them to get just a little bit bigger. But sometimes when you pick them up, they start squealing because they're down, and then they start running, and then you try to catch them, and then you pick them up, and they just go. <laughs> until you put them back with their mom or something. But, got two red ones, one white one, coconut, and then two black ones. So I'm not sure if they're all bucks. I think coconut is for sure a buck, but I'm not sure about the rest. Their mom is just, they don't really look anything like their mom. And their dad is another one that looks like this little one. It looks the same as this. So I bred them, because I thought they might give me I don't know, something else, because normally when rabbits have babies, they don't have something that looks like them. Like, her mom and dad are wild color. They look like wild rabbits. So, yeah. And her brother is all the way white, and they had a white one, so. It's just, they don't really, all the time, have some that look like them. So that's kind of why I like um, breeding ones that look similar, and then seeing, um, what color they give me because it's just kind of funny. So run away right there. She is pregnant. Hopefully, I mean she should be. She's acting like it anyway. Um, and she should have babies like the middle of May or something. Um, so I'll just put a nesting box in there before, like I'll put it in there. It's pretty much May. I think it's the last day of April maybe? I don't know, but it's pretty much May and I'll just put the nesting box in there sooner so she can have um, her babies in the nesting box and then, um, yeah, that'll just be better. So these baby rabbits, they're actually pretty friendly and I'm teaching them to be nice. So when I sell them, if people like, like to hold on to them, because I know a lot of people who like to hang on to their rabbits and they're just too mean and they can't really hang on to them. So I've been training all the rabbits the baby rabbits to be held and to be uh, not care when you flip them over uh, just because their mom if you flip her over she gets just really mad so yeah so I have to train them to be nice and they already come up to me when I open the cage so so these bunnies are of New Zealand and then they're half a little bit not half um they're a little bit lop. That's why coconut's ears sometimes are a little loppy. But they're not all the way loppy. Um, their uncle, Snowman, he has lop ears. Well, one lop ear, anyway. Um, so, they're half lop. That's kind of why they're crazy. And their mom gets mad when they go all over, get all over her. So, a new buck will be really nice actually because then I can have more babies and then you know so they should be getting sold soon so yeah that'll kind of be nice <laughs> so yeah I think we have to wash out their water bottles yep <laughs> they're, they're a little healthy. bit but in the mm. winter they actually clean themselves because yeah. they freeze and all the algae freezes to the ice they love going on top of that icy box yeah clean that out today Get They're that just scrub brush. getting crazy. All they right. kind of like the baby calf. <laughs> so that's all about these baby rabbits for now. They're getting big and they're just doing really good. So this is the nicest one. Whoa. <laughs> I love how you could just grab them like that. That's so cute. So I'm on my way to make breakfast. We got a little sidetracked with the bunnies. Mm, they're cute. Yeah, they smell good too. Mm -hmm. Good morning, coconut. Is this coconut? Mm -hmm. Good morning. It's been coconut since it was born. <laughs> hey, Belle. Belle, you want to say hi to coconut this morning, Belle? Check her out. She's a cutie. He or she, whatever it is, I don't know. I think it might be a buck, but I don't know. Or he, he's a cutie. Yeah. He or she. Just Soon like it shall be revealed what you are. <laughs> mm. 
I think she wants to go back. Yeah. <laughs> she wants to go back. They love going. See? <laughs> they like to be up high, I guess. Yeah. I, mama. I used to let Runaway have coconut because she had her babies and she was just full of milk. So I'd give her coconut and coconut would drink some of it because it's just not too good when they just full of milk. We left them like that, like... Their mom, she had babies, and I didn't have any rabbits to put on it, so I wouldn't put any rabbits on it, but she's still good, but she they just do better when you do that. What? What are you doing? What do you want? So they're pretty lazy. <laughs> so we're going to have baby ducks soon, because they're going to hatch, like, now. So it's kind of just the right timing, because now we have baby chicks, and they can go in with the baby chicks. I don't know if we will, because they might... Well, we have one heat lamp, so they actually might go in with the baby chicks. Um, but they're going to need, like, maybe a water container or something that's bigger because they're ducks. And they will just jump in the normal water sometimes because... And then they'll tip them over, too, sometimes. But if you put it high enough there where um, they can just drink out of it, that only happened, like, a few times with us. So normally they won't tip over the waters, but sometimes they will because... Mm. Yeah. He wants that again. I know. Coconut, is that coconut doesn't know what Very coconut social. is supposed social to do. Social bunny. Ooh. <laughs> coconut thinks he wants out and then he wants in, but yeah. All right. So, baby ducks. Hey, Blizzard. How you doing? He's just tired. Good morning. He's a good guard dog. He don't like anyone else except for us. Yeah, he is good guard dog, aren't you? But when we have try, when we try to have people watch our animals, it's gonna be a little hard with him, cause he'll kind of try to get them. Getting sidetracked again, this time with the dog, Blizzard. Mama loves the animals, right, Blizzard? He's we love eleven you. months. Yeah, he's eleven months, I think. Good pup. Right? Uh, no, he's Ooh. gonna be eleven months next month, and then in June he'll be a year old. June eleventh at nine fifty. Whoa, um, easy boy. I forget. Down. Okay. He'll be a year old <laughs> June 11th at 9.50 in the night because I know when he was born because I saw him come right out. So it was 9.50. You saw him come right out when he was born? Yeah, he was not the last one. What was so he? What number was he? One. I don't know. Then Banana Split's the oldest, so does the youngest. He's like right in the middle. Okay. Kind of, sort he's of. He's a middle at dog, huh? He's kind of at the end, but he's still in the middle. He was a pretty chill little puppy, too. He wasn't, um, you know, very uppity uppity too much. Yeah. He was just kind of calm and. Doing. Just. Kind of just calm little pup. But he's still banana split. Baby. Our other, <laughs> our other pup, his brother was really wild and yeah. whew, he just jumped on you. Well, every he, time he came yeah, into the pen, he was just super crazy. Plus, he was the dominant one, so he was just yeah. Really he was definitely the dominant one, and and Blizzard was, was the uh, what do you call it? The one I don't know. The, the what? That wasn't dominant anyway. The submissive one. Yeah, I think that's what, He's what it was. He's just like his dad. He gets his belly rubs. Yeah, his dad there. is a people people person. He loves attention. But and he loves people. But his dad likes anyone. But he yeah. doesn't. He gets the, the not liking anyone from his mom, really. His mom, <laughs> she was really a guard dog. Ooh, yeah. She gets a guard, he gets a guard doggy in him from his mama. And his belly rub. So, so daddy was really friendly and... Mama was on the more protective of, yeah. of us. So. But he got banana split. I don't know what. I think he got his craziness from his mom, cause her, their mom was pretty. If you got her wild, which <laughs> Red Pepper is good at getting dogs wild, what you need to do is you stand up and you go, and then. They go really crazy and they run around. Watch this. So how she does it? Oh, get down, Blizzard. Watch this. Blizzard. Oh. Hey. Good boy. So you do that and then they just run around in circles really fast. Or at least our dogs have. And they just 
Yeah, that's a good crazy way to get wild. their energy off. Oh boy, all right. Out on their line. Okay, well, we're getting sidetracked again. Uh, yes. So it looks like Papa says, I need to go to the garden. I gotta pick something. So I'm headed over that way. Check it out. And if you go over to the pond, you can probably see little Jimmy. Who's little Jimmy? Little Jimmy is a baby river. He'll be on his log. Okay. A little river cooter? Yeah. Oh. Okay. For a minute there, I thought you were talking about another bird. Nope. She has been really good with her birds lately. She's been telling me about some titmouses she's been seeing up on the trees and... We got a titmouse nest in our porch. I guess we have a titmouse nest in our on our porch. Who knew? She's getting yeah. good on her birds. I'm impressed. Not the she's one impressing me. that has um, a nest in the rafters, but it's another one that made a nest in a bucket. All right. So, Mom, you just you keep learning about bloom? those birds because that's pretty neat. Did you see that? What was it? The flowers blooming. Oh yeah, look at that. The flowers are blooming. Oh, Daddy. He did such a nice job putting these flowers in. I think we got these, we got these from, from Bobblehead Homestead, right? Mr. Bobblehead. Bobblehead Homestead. Woohoo. Thank you, Mr. Bobblehead. He's normally on that Let's lawn. check it out and see what's going on at the pond here quick. Another, guys, I am getting sidetracked this morning. I don't know who's going to cook breakfast if I'm out here having fun, checking everything out this morning. See, like, this is a I guess it's good to wake up at 6 a.m. So it's, it's probably a good thing that we got a calf because I'm seeing all sorts of stuff I don't usually get to enjoy and every day and this pickles. early. Plus, it's a good bonding experience with Pinky. Just me and her, and little Pepper, or Bell Peppers back there. She's being pretty quiet, so it works. All right, what's going on here? So the pond is clean. It's just little Jimmy. He's normally on there when it's sunny, mainly though. But when it's really sunny, the other turtles come out. Yep. So there should be lots of fish in here. You can see a fish right there. Yep, probably. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, but that's it's little Jimmy. Right there. Right there, that's little Jimmy, that little turtle. See? Little Jimmy right there. Oh, yeah, there's little Jimmy. Hey, little Jimmy. You can I see him right on it. there. Okay, let me try it's to. Just right. below the surface right there. There. <laughs> there he goes. Buenas mananas, little Jimmy. And there was just a nice a fish, fish right up there. Papa has done such a nice job here. It looks beautiful. And I get to enjoy it. Whew. It's nice in the morning. It's a cool morning this morning, so it's very pleasant out here. You know, it should be getting pretty hot Whew. by about 10, 11. So it's good to wake up early. Get out on your homestead and take care of your animals. Get some cool cool air on you. Okay, so let's see. I don't really know where the strap is. Get some is. work done before it gets hot. There may be more than one. Okay, let's see. Let's check this bed. Normally I sleep in because oh, I can if I want to, but Mom. Look at that. I gotta wake up early. Um, Mom, Take care there. of the calf. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. So Mama does what Mama's gotta do. There's two here, actually. Let's see if we can find a really red one. Okay, let's check this out. Looks like we got some strawberries coming in, guys. You can pick them. Okay, or you can They're not them super red, yeah, but... they're not super red. You wait, the other bed? Normally this bed does not go for I am tempted, but I think I might just leave them on there. I, I don't know if I can find a really nice red one to take a bite out of. I will. I think I know. So we're going to peek around here. I know the, the friend that uh, Papa helped, you know, get her strawberries in. I think she's had quite a few coming on her in her patches. Her. Okay. Normally, so. patch up there strawberries. Hey, Mom, the Mama Bird in there. She had babies. Okay. Mama Bird's up there. Let's yep. check her out. Look at those cardinals. Two males. They're just fighting. Where are they? There's one in the tree. You see it? Oh yeah, it's way up there. And then Morning, Cardinal. We think she has babies because we saw oh, her Mama's a few here. days ago. 
It's bright. Oh boy. She's up in there. She's in the garden in that little in that house. Um, birdhouse. birdhouse gourd Papa put up there. I don't know if she's Isn't that nice? I think she, it's being I think used she for has a purpose. Because the other day we saw her with a grub and then a, a worm something. It's fun to see her in there taking care of those babies yeah. and that she uses our garden as her home. Yeah. That means it's a nice place, it's a safe place. Oh, so. Yeah, we, we got a lot of kale coming in here. We've been harvesting some for our chickens, chopping it's, it up for them. It's kale from last year. I have gave some to our sheep. <laughs> also, I don't know if kale or sheep should have kale, but I gave them a little bit. They ate it all. They liked it. And it's the white. So, I think as long as I don't give them too much, they should be okay. So, we're checking out the strawberry bed right over here. See if we can see anything. Let's check it out. I just see flowers. I think this, these bed went later. And then we start going Let's see. I don't think they have strawberries there yet. I think they only... No strawberries yet, just over on that side? Look, the mama bird, see her? She wasn't in there. Oh, is she just fly up there? She's in there. Oh, she's right up there. Okay. Morning, mama bird. She saw us by her nest. Okay. All right, so... We have some, what are they called? Golden raspberries. The golden raspberries are going to be coming in here soon too, right back there. Those are delicious. We got those from our friends, Shalom Acres. They just and They are super delicious. They have such great flavor. It is amazing. And they are producing so well for us. I can't wait. Well, they have in the past years that we've had them. And so I, I am looking forward to having some of those this year. It's so nice to have your own fruit to enjoy on your homestead. Such a blessing. I didn't grow up having that. I mean, I think we had a, like a little, tiny little plum tree growing up. And we might have got a few little plums off there. Bad. But that was about it. We didn't really harvest it and it didn't produce like a, a whole bunch. It was like, hey, you get out there and you, you got them when they were ready or you missed them and there weren't very many, so. Just don't to on be able to experience this, experience of homesteading and take a little scoot there, kiddo. This experience of homesteading and um, having and growing your own food and having your own animals, it's such a blessing to be able to enjoy. It is so neat, such a wonderful experience. I really enjoy it. I think my children really enjoy it. My whole family does. Oh, there's that little titmouse. No, not titmouse. Chickadee. Sorry. Oh, she just flew. She She's just up gave there. Her baby something, I think. <laughs> Pinky's all about those birds. I like that she likes to see the birds. She knows so much. I tell you. So, all right. Let's see. We got some of our cacti over here, growing up real beautiful. That is. What is that? Ooh. Is it? Prickly pear or no? Yep, prickly pear. Prickly pear? All right. Those are really good too. And they're Grow really prickly good. pear. You're beautiful. Plus they taste good too. Yep. All right. Let's see. Over here are my potatoes I planted. It looks like I need to add some more mulch to those babies. Yeah, I told you. Because they're, uh, they're getting pretty tall. Whoa, that didn't take long. Uh -huh. These ones, this is another batch of them here I planted. So... That's only my first time planting those. I'm trying to get more hands-on in the garden and help Dad with more stuff. And just get out here. So, here's our hops. And we're going to check and see if there's a f any more ripe strawberries over here. Yeah. Pinky, let's take a they finish. Love, they love to make their nest in the hops. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Let's take a quick peek in these ones here, quick, and see if we do see any red ones. I think I just see a bunch of green. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of green. But that's a lot of green. I wonder if these trees or okay, these trees are blocking no, some I don't of their think, sun. I don't think they so are. So they can be, you know, ripen up. I hope not, but we'll check with Papa and see, look, these we'll are see. Still turning red. Okay, we got a few down there. Um, I don't think they are because like when the sun comes out in the middle of the day, it shines through the tree's leaves and they get sunlight. 
Okay. So got some nice ones. big ones coming in here. Yeah. Can't wait till they ripen up. Yeah, that'll be nice. Oh, oh, can you see what she's got? What do you got? Open. She might have put something in her mouth. No, she doesn't. Okay. She, she just has something. Out. Okay. She just um, <laughs> so we're like totally ooh, um getting a whole bunch of these strawberries. They are just multiplying on us. So I told Papa that I really would like to just you know, keep planting more and more so that we can have enough to make jam out of and, you know, make some jelly and, which I have never done before. So, I am learning all the time, guys. Learning all the time. New fun experiences. Um, yeah. That one right in there looks like it might be a taster for me. Not that one. Oh, that big one right there in the middle. So if you can pop that one. Uh, mm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll take it. I think we found one. Let's check it out. It's a good size. It's still a little wet from the morning dew. I think I'll take a little nibble. I hope it's ready. It might be a little sour at the first mm. part, but I want to try. Mmm. Oh, my. Mmm. This has great flavor. Don't eat it all. Mmm. Mmm. I won't. Okay, good. All right, your turn. Yeah, that's, I think it was ready. Mm-hmm. That was real, that was ready. Okay. Now, Bill. Oh, what a blessing. See, that's a hawk. That's a hawk. What a blessing. All right, okay, Pinky. Bill. Don't eat the green bar. That's too tough. Can you take the little green stuff off and you can give her a little bite there? Yeah. See how she likes it. <laughs> how do you she like that? that? She's doing. <laughs> How do you like that, little girl? Is that yummy? Breakfast, huh? Getting sidetracked for strawberries? A side breakfast? All right, I better get in there and cook some breakfast for this family. So tell them what you're gonna make. I am planning on making some French toast this morning oh, Mom, see, with some of our honey we picked up. See? We bought We bought a whole bucket, so we got a lot of honey to go around, which is awesome. Now I won't be like, hey kids, don't finish the honey. No more honey. You're gonna finish it all, it's for cooking too. So, now I'm like, okay, we got more honey, it's okay. Not a problem. What'd you get there, little girl? Cricket frogs. Cricket frogs. Always interesting around here. Critters of all sorts, guys. Got it, see? Cricket frog. Now, see these? I don't really mind those. <laughs> jump at Aw, look at it. See, it jumped at me. I didn't even flinch, guys. I am not afraid of little froggies like this one. But toads, I am very afraid of. Okay. He's okay. And I, I really like the, uh, what do you call them? No, the uh, green tree frogs, I think. Oh, yeah. I love them. They are so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Their so colors are just awesome. Amazing creatures. Just so beautiful. And we like to keep those guys in the garden. Oh, yes. And toads are good for the garden. I don't really like to... I don't like to touch toads at all. They scare me. But I do like the fact that they are our pest control for our garden. So, go toads in that aspect. Other than that, don't bring them by me. <laughs> Hungry? Ooh, another sidetrack? Oh boy. Yeah. Everywhere we go, another piece of breakfast. I guess I'll take a nibble. It gave me some fuel for breakfast. You need it, yep. Making breakfast. Picked a little bit of green briar here. Where is it? There it is. Gonna have a little snack Ooh. here. And this time I'm really headed in to make breakfast, I promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You need more energy. So guys, as I was out there this morning, taking a peek at the chicks, and I was talking about the beginning of my love for homesteading, I, I just wanted to add to it that my, I think that my love for it began with our friend, I mentioned her before, Amy, and 
just going over and you know helping her out butcher her chickens and she gave us the opportunity and I think it's just such an important life skill to know to know how to butcher your own chicken and I wanted to gain that skill even though I didn't know if we would ever butcher chickens on our own it was something that I desired to be able to have meat chickens and butcher them someday but I didn't know that we'd ever get there and here we are now we got our meat chicks and it's not um, falling in love with just like the butchering of the animal it was learning a skill that I believe is necessary to have it's an important skill to know how to butcher your own chicken and and to be able to pass it on to my children so that they can know and have these life skills and so I believe that's where my my love of homesteading kind of began and as I watched her you know with her hens and in her garden tend to her garden and learning and she knew so many things about you know keeping her animals and growing food that I started this love inside of me and I wanted to know more about herbs and so many other things you know how to can and preserve food I remember she came over one day and she brought some chicken that she got on sale from the store and she took me through the process and she helped me can it and I was so happy to be able to get that experience and just start learning and now you know since we came down to Arkansas and we moved down here I was able to um, lead the butchering process of um, some chickens that were going to be they were just going to be killed um, from some place and so you know and they weren't going to be used for anything so we took them and processed them ourselves for our own meat and they were an organic uh, chicken and so I was able to you know take the information that I got from that beginning um, practice that I got with our friend Amy and put it to use and um, it went really well I was able to remember except for how hot your boiling water should have been for dipping the the chicken in with its feathers and so um, it really just began that love for me of homesteading and I'm so thankful for her taking me under her wing and teaching me taking the time to teach me she even taught me some sewing things I'm getting a little bit emotional about it but I really appreciate her and I appreciate it for taking the time so you know some people aren't patient enough to take you under their wing and teach you things but um, she was she was patient and so thank you if you're watching um, I just wanted to kind of just go back through that and just kind of explain a little bit more of what I what I meant about that love of learning um, to homestead and um, provide for your family and yourself and the the whole experience and it's it's a neat thing to be able to do that and to know how to do these things to gain these life skills you know when you're able to and I think my girls. Uh, Pinky Pepper and Red Pepper were just babies when we went over to butcher the chickens to get them processed and you know we did the whole the whole process there with with our friend and um, I was so excited to learn so excited and it was it was a really neat thing to 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 learn so I just wanted to let you guys just in on a little bit more of that and um, really excited about the meat chicks still so we'll see how that all goes who do we got here who do we got here oh look at you look at you